When you hear the word systems, what comes to mind? For some, it might bring up images of ecological systems like our ecosystems or climate systems. For others, it could be technological systems or political systems. Now, what about when you hear the term systems thinking? This video explores the world of systems, what systems thinking is, the core building blocks that make up any systems, and why systems thinking is valuable. We learn to define systems and differentiate closed and open systems. We'll also build understanding of the three core components of a system and begin applying a systems thinking approach to grasp complex real world scenarios for better decision making. Let's start with the basics. What is a system? A system can be defined as a set of interconnected elements that work together to form a unified whole and accomplish a specific task. An example could be the digestive system, made up of organs like the stomach, intestines, and liver, all working together to accomplish the task of digesting food and distributing nutrition. Systems can be infinitely complex, but for simplicity, we can classify them into two broad categories, closed systems and open systems. Closed systems are self-contained and have limited interactions with the environment. Open systems, on the other hand, are more dynamic and interact with their external environment. An example of a closed system is a mesocosm, a self-contained natural environment in a jar. However, an open airport is an open system, the airport takes in passengers, luggage, and aircraft on one side and releases travel, cargo, and departing flights on the other. It has subsystems like security checkpoints, terminals, and air traffic control, all working together to facilitate travel. Now, the airport doesn't operate in isolation. It interacts with external entities like the airline companies, travel agencies, and government agencies for regulations and security. All these elements are connected and a change in one can impact everything else. For example, increasing flight schedules might increase passenger flow, impacting security checkpoints and ground transportation, which might end up causing delays and affect traveler satisfaction. An airport manager should have an understanding of those interacting elements and may even learn to adjust or influence them to the airport's advantage. This is what systems thinking is all about, seeing the bigger picture. This mindset helps us understand the web of interactions that control our environment, society, and business. Most importantly, it helps us find ways to influence that web of interactions for the better. In order to understand and study systems, we need to think about the components that make up a system. There are three essential components, elements, interconnections, and purpose. Let's look more into each of those. Elements form the foundational pieces of any system. They are the tangible parts we can easily perceive in a system. Things we can see, feel, count, or measure. Looking at a business, the employees, products, customers, or external stakeholders will be considered the elements of this system. Another system component is interconnections, which are the relationships that connect those elements to one another and hold the system together. They define how elements interact and influence one another. At times, interconnections can be quite complex, like feedback loops, where multiple flows directly affect one another. The third major component of a system is its purpose or function. That is the system's basis for existing in the first place. This part is the most important because it guides the behavior and evolution of its elements. But it's also the least visible part of a system. For example, the legal system exists to uphold justice and maintain social order, while the educational system aims to foster learning and knowledge for the learners. The purpose acts as the system's driving force and shapes how it functions. We can put those different parts together to construct any system we can think of, and each will have its own unique elements, interconnections, and purpose. Those components can get infinitely complex, especially as we look at bigger and more open systems. But the level of details we include in our study of a system depends entirely on the need and goals of understanding that particular system. As we study a system, we gain crucial foundation for understanding how it works and what can be done 
to improve that system. After understanding what systems thinking is and what components exist within the system, the next logical question to ask is, why should we care? Why is it important to think in terms of systems? Let's begin with a story about a large hospital system. I'm going to call it Metro Health. As the hospital grew, the executive team decided to outsource certain non-medical services like housekeeping and food services to third-party contractors to reduce expenses. However, the contractor companies eventually decided to start cutting corners and reduce their own expenses to increase their profit margins. With this, patient satisfaction at the hospital plummeted, which led to public backlash and eventually government fines and threats of revoking certifications. Metro Health operated within an interconnected system of elements and had its own smaller subsystems. And studying those systems up front could have prevented this negative outcome. This example underscores why system thinking is crucial. It simply helps us make better decisions. Systems thinking encourages a broader perspective for better long-term decision making. It helps avoid short-sighted choices with adverse consequences by understanding the relationship between structure and behavior. If we find ourselves in a problematic situation like Metro Health, systems thinking can help us build more resilient systems by identifying root causes and developing sustainable solutions instead of temporary relief. In conclusion, we have taken our first steps into the world of system thinking. We've differentiated between closed and open systems and seen how individual changes can impact everything else. We've also looked at components of a system and how they can help us better understand its inner workings. We have explored the importance of systems thinking, understanding its role in informed decision making. Now it's your turn. What are some systems that exist in your life or business? What are some components and interactions that exist within them? And how could you use systems thinking to make them better? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below.